Do you know what this means? It means we're gonna make some money. It's coat season. Daddy, rock your Backstreet. <laughs> Where's my script? Hi, my name is Lucy and this is video four of all I know about Depop. For my Depop shop newbies, hopefully this video is for you. I've thought quite carefully about what my top tips would be for someone that's just starting a shop or what I would tell myself if I was to restart my Depop all over again. This video is gonna be my five top tips to help you grow the quickest with your shop. I'm gonna start with some essential but well-known tips and then I've got some more later on that are not as much talked about but I think are also quite good tips to take on board. Get that listing count high. I've mentioned how crucial this is in my other videos but I really couldn't miss this one out of this one. If you're gonna take one tip from this video, it should be this one. I would try to get 50, 60 listings on your shop as soon as possible. In fact, it should probably be your first goal from opening Depop Shop. This will give you some initial experience in sourcing, shooting and listing. It'll give you a good grasp of how the process works and you'll get some good practice in. I think a lot of getting better at my photos and sourcing came from repeatedly doing these things again and again over time. After you've taken a hundred photos of a hundred different shirts, you start to get a good grasp of what looks good and what doesn't because you've done this a hundred times and the same applies with sourcing. Also having a lot of listings just makes your shop look so much more professional. If your shop feed looks full then it tends to give the impression that you're uh, an actual Depop shop owner rather than just someone that sells their personal items. You start to look like a more serious shop. Also the more listings you put out the more chance a buyer potentially comes across your item the more chance that you'll make a sale. Even if you list 50-60 items and you make no sales and no one <laughs> shows much interest this is still okay. You've put a big selection of items out there, you now know you need to do a little bit of tweaking. Perhaps your photos could be better, maybe it's your descriptions, or perhaps you're just not selling the right sort of clothes. But at this point, after you've put a big pool of your items out there, you can see what's worked and what hasn't worked, and pivot from there. It's much harder to get this feedback when you've only done a small amount of listings, so trust me, start listing and see what happens. Refresh daily. This is such a weird thing that it seems to only apply to Depop and I don't know why they haven't changed their algorithm so we can all rest our thumbs but uh, it is what it is. So if you don't know what refreshing is, let me enlighten you on perhaps the worst task there is on Depop. So when you search for an item on Depop, say you type in black baguette bag, the Depop search results are in chronological order from when they were last updated or listed with the top result being the last shop that refreshed a relevant listing. So with this one, if we click on this one, we've got a, the first result is from Lily's Vintage Shop and she refreshed this five minutes ago. Very cute bag, Lily. And if you go to the second one, this is from Miss Allure. Again, this was refreshed 40 minutes ago. So I don't believe it's actually 100% chronological. I think they do bump up um, more successful shops and items that are a bit more relevant. But even still, I think it still does play a big part in the search results. The way you refresh is probably gonna want to go to the bottom of your shop feed. So you wanna scroll down to the bottom of your shop might take you a bit quicker <laughs> and then find the last item click on the item click edit click save and then click back this listing will then go up to the top of your shop's feed it will be considered as an updated listing and pushed up higher in the search results and now the fun begins because you have to do this one by one for the rest of your listings Lucky for you, you probably have like less than 100, so you can do this pretty quickly. Um, I think I've got about 500, so quite time consuming when you have more. Yeah, so it's a little tedious refreshing, but it really does help to get your items seen. You're probably gonna wanna do this once a day. Um, it's a good thing to do while you're watching like YouTube or the TV and just kind of 
do it while you're not thinking. You can get bots that refresh for you, um, but these tend to be quite pricey because you will buy them in like yearly contracts, so I wouldn't advise that if you're a new Depop shop. They also can get you in trouble if you abuse them too. Uh, I've heard rumours of <laughs> people that have had their accounts just like completely removed um, because they just <laughs> made the bot continuously refresh the listing, um, which is obviously really spammy and really stupid, so don't do that. As a newbie, I would stick with the thumbs and refresh every day and you should start seeing some results. Build first, market later. Really early on in my shop, I think this was because I really don't like listings, so I was looking for other work to do. I had like 20 listings in my shop and I thought, fab, it's time to market. I'd read a lot about how important social media was and I was spending a lot of time working on my Instagram. But what I didn't realise is that even if I did convince someone to come and look at my shop, there really wasn't anything there interesting for them to see. There was not enough listings and it was too much of a small thing to really put a lot of work into marketing. With apps like Depop you already have customers that are in the right place so you don't have to go to other places to look for them to bring them over to your shop. At first I think it's great to just grow on the app alone. Put your time into listing and being active on the app, liking things, uh, following people and build your initial base around people that are already buyers on the app. You're paying that Depop 10% fee because Depop alone brings most of your audience to you. Marketing elsewhere, unless you know you are able to do it really well, is not worth your time at the beginning. Grow an audience on Depop, create a brand on Depop, and then start marketing elsewhere. Don't go crazy with the tech. Cameras, backdrops, lighting, packing stations, iPads, um, cute storage solutions, don't purchase these at the beginning. I don't think purchasing these upfront is a good move. To start with, all you need is a camera phone, somewhere to prop your camera up, a clean backdrop, uh, and a window with some good light. If you've got all of these, then I really wouldn't invest in anything until you've really got going with your shop. Oh, and an iron and a steamer are also a good shout, but you can just, you know, scavenge one of these or get them for cheap early on. Don't get suckered into believing that if you buy the £1,000 fancy camera that your favourite Depop shop uses that that's going to make you more sales. At the beginning I really think all your money should be going back into more stock and packaging supplies. Work with what you have at first before you invest in a better setup. I used to balance my little iPod touch on a drying rack to take my photos. I would pack all my parcels on the floor and I would store all my stock in Aldi bags for life. When my shop did grow, it then made sense to invest in lights and a backdrop and a packing station just to make my work a little bit easier. But buying all of these up front would have just slowed down my growth at the start of Depop. Pay your shop with your profit. This is a big thing that I wish I had done differently when I started my Depop shop. As soon as I started my Depop shop, I was relying on it as a revenue of income for myself and my finances and I would pay myself and then whatever I had left after that would then I would invest back into stock and back into the business. But ideally if I could have invested all of the profit that I made from Depop back into the business and I took nothing out of it, I could have grown my shop so much quicker. I really had to buy super cheap stock early on so I could keep bringing out new listings. Uh, I think it took me about a year until I could get enough money together to then buy vintage wholesale in big job lots. If you are in a position where you've got a full-time or a part-time job that can look after you financially uh, and you can put all your Depot profits back into more stock then that is the ideal position to be in. Not only do you have a much more relaxed mindset because you don't have the pressure of bringing in money from Depop to look after you yourself. The more money you have, the more items you can buy, the more listings you can have, the more practice you have of the whole process and the more sales you can make. If you are relying on your Depop profit to pay yourself, my advice is to just be as frugal as you can be. Look after yourself but all the money that you can invest back into the business, invest it back in and this will pay off in the long term. To conclude, 
In conclusion, these are my five top tips for growing a Depop shop if you are just starting out. First list 50 to 60 listings, refresh daily, let Depop do the marketing, you don't need fancy tech and keep as much money as you can in your shop. These are what I would tell myself or a friend if they were starting from scratch on Depop. Thank you so much for watching. I've been putting out these videos about every two weeks, so I'm trying to get a little bit quicker but I am actually building a new home on wheels in my spare time, so you might have to bear with me. But the next video is gonna be all about photos, so I think that will be a good one, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you next time. And I'll see you next time. And I'll see you next time. And I'll, and I'll,